guys welcome back to my channel and today's is my third and final video that I'm filming for today and this one is going to be my March TBR pile most of you know that I've been doing themes for my TBR so this month's theme is true crime slash thriller slash mystery just because I do have a lot of good true crime books that I've been wanting to get into as well as some thriller mystery books so I'm hoping that I'm going to get through a lot of these. I've really been wanting to read them. And a couple of these are ones that are were in my January 2021, which I kind of made my books I want to get into before the end of the year kind of pile. Let me stop talking and let's just start getting into it, shall we? The first book that I have on my pile is The Amityville Horror by Jay Anson. This book is actually a true story. There is a house in upstate New York that has had some terrible, terrible um, things that have happened inside its walls. And in the early, I, I believe the mid early, you know, in the seventies, a family moves in and a lot of stuff happens that is very unexplainable and very terrifying. I do know I've seen some things about this book being uh, for the time that it was written in it was very embellished and some of it is not true but it's a book that I've been wanting to read for a while and I definitely know that haunted houses are a real thing and especially with the history of this one this was also was made into a movie and there's been several remakes over the years so you've definitely probably heard of this story it is pretty skinny so i feel like it's going to be one that i'm just gonna like delve in and it's going to be hard for me to like stop reading the next one that i have here is a true crime book it's by one of the most um famous i would say true crime writers out there and rule and that is green river running red the real story of the green river killer america America's deadliest serial murderer. This is about the Green River Killer, which happened in Washington. And this man, Gary Ridgway, picked up prostitutes and would set, would um, engage in sexual activity with them or abuse them and then end up killing them. And he did this for over a string of few years. I believe he's had at least maybe over 20 victims. He's had a lot of victims and he got away for so long until finally with the technology that we have now with crime solving, he got caught. And this is pretty much just examining the cases, examining the, the evidence and talking about this case. So I definitely think it's gonna be an interesting read. I feel like there's gonna be a lot of stuff in here that I didn't know was going on in the case, which I love reading about that. So I'm really excited to see how this goes and just, yeah, just enjoy it. The next book that I have for you guys is going to be The Trial of Lizzie Borden, A True Story by Kara Robertson. This is following the Lizzie Borden um, murder case where Lizzie murdered her stepmother and her father with an ax. And it was one of the bloodiest crimes at that time. The house is still around. I actually wanna go stay at the Lizzie Borden house. Um, and give a tour and you know take a tour on it and whatnot. I know there has been a lot of debate over the years of did she or did she not do this? There is a little bit of reasoning. Um, I did find out from some of the docs that I was watching that she was sexually abused by her father and her stepmother really didn't do anything about it knowing that it was going on. So there's definitely a lot of questions, definitely still a lot of mystery surrounding if she did it. Um, but yeah, just really excited to get into it. I I love studying true crime so this was definitely something I was really excited to pick up and hopefully I'm gonna get to it this month. The next one that I have on my pile is another true crime one. Like I said a lot of these are gonna be true crime and this is Conviction the Untold Story of Putting Jody Arias Behind Bars by Juan Martinez. Juan Martinez was one of the prosecutors for the Jody Arias case. He was in charge of pretty much getting her put behind bars with all the evidence that they had and if you're not familiar with Jody Arias she killed her boyfriend Travis because they were on again off again. She was super in love with him wanted to be with him for the rest of her life and he just kind of didn't see it that way and it was a very toxic relationship and she just couldn't take no for an answer is really how the story goes i really love reading books where people that are part of the trials or were there during those crimes it kind of gives an 
a different level to the story. Uh, Juan Martinez, definitely he is a no-nonsense ma man. I've seen him talk and speak, so I feel like he's going to peel a lot of layers back that the public d didn't know at the time. This next one is one that I have had on my pile for god knows how long this is actually a tie-in to uh this book over here life after death by damian eccles and it is yours for eternity a love story on death row and it is written by him and his wife damian and Lori actually met corresponding um with each other she was someone who studied the west memphis three case which damian was charged and put away for it even though it's, it's an interesting crime and let's just say I really don't think they did it. She was doing her research and decided to correspond with him and kind of, you know, cause she was on this, um, she was trying to get these three boys out of prison and pretty much a love story forms between them. And this book is pretty much um, all the letters that they sent to each other um, while Damien was in prison. I just think it's going to be really cute. So along the lines of the Juan Martinez book, I have another one from one of the prosecutors of another big case. This case still makes people crazy and upset. We all know the answer to this crime, but just didn't work out the way we wanted it to and that is imperfect justice prosecuting casey anthony by jeff ashton if you lived under a rock don't know who casey anthony is she reported her three-year-old daughter missing well she didn't for a while until finally she had to mom of the year a lot of the evidence they found out pointed to her murdering her daughter. So they put her on trial and this is one of the prosecutors that was working on getting her put behind bars. This case, like I said, still upsets people to this day. It, it still upsets me to this day. It's just, it's so sad what happened to this little girl who from all accounts of what I've seen people talk about her, she was bright, she was, you know, she was cute. She was, she just, she didn't get to live the life that she was meant to. And it, it's just really sad because of her mom's selfishness and pretty much not being a mom to her. Like with the Juan Martinez book, I feel like this is gonna peel a lot of layers back of what I don't know about this case. And just, I'm kind of ready to see stuff I didn't know about Casey and just, what kind of a terrible mom she is. This book I have in my hands is actually one of my last true crime ones, and it actually happened in a, in, in a weird way in my neck of the woods. This was a big tragedy. I still remember the craziness of that day. I remember how heavy it was for my community and especially for the people that were involved in it. Excuse my copy, it was an old library copy, so it looks it looks a little um, different than most books. And it is Think No Evil, Inside the Story of the Amish Schoolhouse Shooting and Beyond, and it is by Jonas Byler. So the early 2000s, a man walked into an Amish schoolhouse and shot, I believe, four or five Amish girls and kept uh, it hostage and then he ended up killing himself. It was a very tragic event for my community since I live in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. This happened in Nickel Mines. It was, which is no, is super close to where I live. Still talking about it, it, it it's very sad. I kind of compare this, not that they're the same, but how heavy it was in the atmosphere when it happened, I kind of compare it to the Sandy Hook shooting. These innocent um, children just going to school, they just, went that day not knowing something terrible was going to happen to them that they were going to be taken hostage that they might not make it out alive what really blows my mind about this with the um with the amish community they are just so forgiving and there's a book that i have to read because it's about them talking to um developing a relationship with the shooter's family saying we forgive you and we forgive him for what he did because I know if it was me, I would not be that forgiving, but how the Amish are with their religion, they just, they forgive really easily because it, they don't want to have, 
you know, that burden on their shoulders. All right, so I have three more here on my pile and then I technically have one more and I should be getting it today. So I'm hoping I do get it today because I wanna read it in conjunction with one of my other books on this pile. The first one that I have, I am so excited to finally have this. If the image that I saw, uh, I think on Instagram or Twitter, I can't remember, is true. We're getting another book in this series. It's one of my favorite people. I don't know if my other pers favorite person was involved in that, and that is The Ghost Hunters Adventure Club and the Secret of the Grande Chateau by Dr. Cecil H.H. H. Mills. I meant to say grand. Yes my bouginess got to me and thought it was grande so i meant to say grand chateau so, this is actually the first novel that is from game grumps which if you are not familiar with game grumps they are a youtube comedy duo who they play video games but then they just kind of you feel like you, they're talking and hanging out with you on the couch while you're watching them play some of the stuff it is I would say if you're a little younger, it is a little inappropriate. So maybe ask your parents first if you're allowed to watch it, but they are so funny. They are so hilarious. They are so kind and giving. I'm really excited to read this, especially, I know there's gonna be a lot of humor. There's gonna be a lot of funny stuff that happens. And I believe um, this is gonna be kind of like a mystery where they're going into this house and just weird things happen. and. Definitely with the Game Grumps pros, there's gonna be some really awesome, funny things in here. So I'm ready to, to laugh with this one. The next one that I have here, and I just realized I do have another one. I have to go pick it up at the library. Um, but this one I mentioned in the beginning of the year for my TBR, and it is Shadows of Foxworth, which is the third book, and I call it the Attic Series um, by V.C. Andrews. I've talked about this book several times. It is in the Flowers of the Attic world before that ish that um, the first book in that series happened where this follows the original Corinne Foxworth. Um, the first two books in the series followed like, which are right here behind me, they follow uh, her going into the Foxworth family and the stuff that happens to her where she realizes this isn't, it's not a good situation to be in. This follows her daughter who finds out her heritage a little bit more and just kind of delves in to see what her family's about and just kind of getting to the truth of things that she didn't know existed. I love these two books. Um, I love the Flowers in the Attic series. There is a dud series in there that I'm, I tell people don't even bother reading it. It's so bad. It, it, no, it, it was bad. Um, but this one is actually really good. So I'm hoping to get to this one. The other one that I have by VC Andrews, I'm not going to have it yet. I have to go pick it up in the library. It is the umbrella lady. And from what I saw in the title of that one, it's about a girl who gets abandoned at a train station. She's told, I believe it's by her father that he's going to be coming back to pick her up and he never does. So this strange lady comes and picks her up and tells her like, oh, well, your father told me to come and get you. And a lot of stuff happens um, with the V.C. Andrews style where it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be dark and mysterious. And I just found out there's a second book. So this is like her, the newest series that's coming out. The next book that I have is actually another one that was in the same video like the V.C. Andrews book was. And that is The Twin by Natasha Preston. So if you guys know me, you know I love Natasha Preston. She is one of my favorite YA thriller authors. She is very, I would say comparable to Stephen King and Danielle Vega. This one follows a girl who discovers that her twin is trying to take over her and just kind of get her out of the picture. So I'm really excited to read this and this is actually gonna go along with the next one that I don't have that's coming in the mail. That one would be The Lake by Natasha Preston. I found out a few weeks ago that this book was a real thing and I'm so excited because the one that's coming in the mail is actually a signed copy that Barnes & Noble has exclusively. So funny thing guys, as soon as I stopped filming, it got dropped off. So I'm so excited. I'm gonna go ahead and unpackage this and show you guys. This is so exciting. Look at that, isn't that so pretty? Ah, I love it. Ah. I love it. So I guess while I have it here, let me just kind of read the back to you guys so you get an idea of what it's about. 
So it says, welcome to Camp Pine Lake, where the only thing scarier than a ghost story is the past coming to haunt you. Ooh, I love that. Esme and Kayla once were campers at Camp Pine Lake. Now they're back as counselors in training. Esme loves the little girls in her cabin and thinks it's funny how scared they are of everything. The woods, the bugs, the boys, even swimming in the lake. It reminds her of how she and Kayla used to be before. Ooh. Because Esme and Kayla did something terrible when they were campers. Something they've kept a secret all these years. They vow that this summer will be awesome. Two months of sun, s'mores, and flirting with the cute boy counselors. But then they get a message. The lake never forgets. Dun, dun, dun. The secret they've kept buried for so many years is about to resurface. Yeah, that just sounds so good. And because I have the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition, there is some bonus content. Uh, so we get an exclusive short story set in the world of the lake. So that's going to be fun. Um, a Q&A with Tasha Preston and then a map of a Camp Pine Lake. But also this is signed. So I'm going to go ahead and find the signature. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so cool. So I'm so excited to have this um, in my collection and just excited to get into this guys yeah really excited so this is the part where I get to tell you guys how many books that I read in March now I do not like my number but you know hey lots of stuff happen which I will explain in my next video that will be up uh, for my book haul so that'll give you more of an explanation but I was only able to read three books I'm kind of sad that that was all that I had but with the circumstances I was under and what I was going through last month I feel like it's still a good number I still read some books and I'm still right on track for my reading goal this year so definitely gotta be proud of that in some way I never really got to any of my true crime books which was really sad but what I have here is one of them was actually on my February pile and I was still reading that in some March and then I have two VC Andrews books that I read so I'm really happy about that for the first book that I read in March and finished um, well February into March was Lovely War by Julie Berry. So if you've not heard anything about this book, it is a love story that is told by the Greek gods. And how it starts, Aphrodite is caught cheating on her husband and is on trial. And on this trial, she has to prove that love does exist and that she believes in the love. And it's telling two separate love stories during World War One, which is pretty awesome. I don't think there's a lot of World War One representation. I absolutely adored it. It was so good. It was so addicting. There were moments I did not want to put this down. And I just love Julie Berry's writing. I never read anything by her until this one. So I'm definitely looking forward to reading more of her work and just you know exploring the worlds that she's in i definitely highly suggest this if you love greek mythology if you like history if you're a romance person any one of those categories you're going to get in this book even with the romance it's not written very cheesy so if you don't like those cheesy romances this is definitely a book that you might like that's going to be more realistic romance. And I also should mention that the Greek part is told from World War II. So when the Greek gods are discussing the story, it is World War II, which it's kind of cool to see how the Greek gods interact with each other. And you can see how they all relate to the story somehow, which I think is very creative because it could just be like they're telling a story, but they're not somehow involved. They're just viewing it. And I definitely think too with this book, it was very visually appealing. I saw everything in my head. I really felt like I was transported back to the early 1900s and then into the middle of the 1900s with this. Please, please, please go and pick this up if you have not read it, um, especially if you're a romance person. Like I feel like this is a romance book that you're going to love. The next one that I read, but I do not have, unfortunately, I actually borrowed it from my library and that is The Umbrella Lady by V.C. Andrews. This is the newest ghost written V.C. Andrews that is going to be, I believe, a duology so far. I don't know if there's going to be more than the two. I would say it's definitely not as dark as some other V.C. Andrews books that are out 
out there. The first book follows a girl named Saffron who travels with her father by train after a house fire breaks out and they are not able to rescue her mother. Her father tells her he is going to be right back, that he is going to be getting some things, and he ends up just leaving her at the train station. While she's waiting for her father, a older lady shows up and tells her, hey, I would like to take you in while you wait for your father. And during this time, she is staying with her, I believe over a period of two or three years. And she has, the old lady has signs of cruelty, but can also be very kind. But not only that, Saffron is struggling with the fact that did her father really mean to leave her? Or is there a reason why her father left her? I really did enjoy this. I definitely love, um, I liked how this book was. I think for me, it just really was missing something. I don't know if it's because I've read some of her work before and I kind of knew what was going on, but I definitely liked it. I don't think it's one that is gonna be a favorite of mine. Um, I definitely highly do suggest it if you do like the V.C. Andrews Ghost Written books, just you know give it a chance and see what you think i still plan on reading the sequel which is picking up right after saffron has left the um umbrella lady as she calls her the umbrella lady's house i'm hoping maybe the sequel will kind of pick up a little bit more and maybe that will kind of click with me more and the last book that i did read for march is another vc andrews and is actually finally i have finished my what i call the attic series for the dolling gangers and that is shadows of foxworth this one if you've not heard me mention talk about it this one is the third book in the spin-off attic series as i call it and the first two books which are beneath the attic and out of the attic take place with the original corinne foxworth in those those two novels Corinne meets Gardner and she is swept up in this world and becomes a Foxworth but you can also see where the cruelty and the Foxworth curse begins. This book is told in the perspective of Corinne's daughter who is taken to America after a tragic accident. While she is in America with her brother, she finds out about the Foxworth family and how she is tied to the Foxworth legend. I really did like this one. I definitely think it was a great way to tie up the loose ends and kind of put the series together. I think for me, the only thing I wish wouldn't have happened was I kind of wanted the action to be more right as it's happening. For me, being a person that has read a lot of E.C. Andrews, I don't know if it's because I read a lot of her original work or if the ghost written work, but I feel like most of the time you're put right into the action and there's not a lot of stuff that is going on before you get to the main point of the book. So I think that was my only complaint. It's definitely worth the read if you've read the other two. It wasn't weird where stuff didn't make sense to me. I definitely am so happy that I got to finally read this. It's going to be on my bookshelf for years to come and definitely a perfect way to develop more of the Foxworth slash Dollinganger families. There you go guys have it. There is my TBR slash what I read. Unfortunately, I'm sorry that this took forever to get up. Like I said, there had been some things that have happened, which my book haul, I will explain a lot of stuff that has happened and just kind of catch you guys up. So just thank you so much for being patient. I promise this is not going to be... I, I can't, I don't think I can promise that it's not gonna happen, but I'm gonna try to make sure it doesn't happen. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.